In this video, we're going to focus on how we can use the Chart.js plugin for data labels to put in the data labels, but when we hover over our bars, you can see here now, we get new text coming out here. And this is what we're going to work on, how we create a hover effect that would trigger other text that we would like to display. In this case, I'm just showing here, check out my new Udemy course that will be coming out next week. So let's start to explore how we do this. In this video, we're going to answer one of the viewers' question, which is how to change data labels values on Hoover on a bar chart in Chart.js. So this question came from one of my other videos about how to add data labels on top of a bar in Chart.js. And then in here, if you scroll down, you can see here this question came from, let me see here, here it is, uh, Chaitanya Jado. So I'm not sure if I pronounced it correctly. I tried to Google the pronunciation anyway. So first of all, a special thank you to Ch Chaitanya for asking the question. And this is what Chaitanya asked. Uh, thank you for such an informative video, but would you please make a video, video showing how to add data labels on top of a bar in a bar chart and display any value other than data labels when you hover on the bar using Chart.js in React.js. I'm trying from, uh, I am trying from last few days and now running out of time, so your guidance would be very helpful or really helpful. Well, first of all, uh, I'm working on learning React, so I will show you the answer. And this is just in JavaScript, and you can just try to connect them together. So what we're going to do here is basically creating a, a data labels, and then on Hoover they should show. So first of all, we're going to grab here a default code to go to chartjs3.com, getting started. Here, we're going to grab the default code for some reason. On Google Chrome, I get this error, but on my other computer and on Firefox, it works all fine. Anyway, what I want here is just this chunk of code here. So copy this. And if you want to understand what this video, what this code does, watch this video here that explains the JavaScript of it. So I'm going to paste this in here. And then what I want to do here, first of all, is cut this title, put it in there. All right save that refresh there we are so now we have this the next thing what we want to do is eventually this we want to make sure oh we don't need this anymore well uh, we need to put in the data labels uh, javascript library so to do that all we're going to go here is to cdnjs and then you have here the options here the chart.js plugin data labels this is the one we need and here grab version 2 and i guess right now they have the latest version is 2.0.0 first it was like this so at least they're developing and consistently continuing on copy this one here because this is the library we need and then we're going to paste this below the chart.js library why this needs to load after this because this specific library is dependent on whatever is in chart.js and based on certain variables that are already built in chart.js so once you have this, if you save this now here, refresh, nothing happens, of course, because we didn't activate the plugin. So what we're going to do now is we're going to activate the plugin or register the plugin so it's recognized. So we put in here in options, we put a comma, and then we say your plugins. And when we do this plugins, we do bracket, and then we say here chart data labels. This is the chart plugin name or the variable of it. So if I save this now, Refresh, you can see here now, it works beautiful. What I want to do now is, of course, put these values up here top on the bar. So to do this, all we have to do here is, first of all, we have to make sure we have the plugins here while we have that. We're going to put in here in the options, just below the scales here. So you can see this is the scales, so is a comma. Then we say plugins. And basically, we can use now certain built-in commands that the chart data labels plugin has. So that's what we're going to do here. So what we're going to say here, plugins, and then we say here, the we will use the data labels. This is an object that, because of this plugin activation, we are now allowed to use this specific object that is built in. Remember, these are, these are already pre-coded, so that's why we can use this. And then what we want to do here, well, first of all, we want to push this up here. So how do we push this up? Uh, anchor, and then we say here, and, and if we do this, we are going to push it already up here, but of course we're not completely done. Put a comma here, and then we say here align, and our line will be to the top. 
So I have other videos that explain all these items. So I would recommend you to watch those if you need to. And but for now, I'm just going to answer this specific question here because this is very important. And later on, I will talk about data sets, but I have a special video for that that I urge you to watch because those two together is essential. If you don't do that, then you probably will uh, have a item that is not 100% complete. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use the formatter. So we say here the formatter and the formatter command basically converts certain values into something else. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to say here this formatter will have a function. So I'm going to say here this value comma context. And then we say here the arrow function or the arrow function operator, if I'm not mistaken, or expression, I guess. So what this basically does is basically here, this is another word for saying here function. That's basically the uh, difference here. But so uh, since it's now more better to write it like this, so it's more shorter and concise. Anyway, what we want to do here, first of all, I want to show you these values so we have an understanding what these values are. We have a console log here, and I'm going to say your value. And the next one, I'm going to grab this one that will say context. And then we say this here, let's save this, refresh, open up developer tab. Then you can see here we get the object and in this object you can see all of this information here and later on this will become very very useful. However, what I want to do now is I want to grab or basically eventually we want to change this data on Hoover. That would mean that what is the data we are going to deal with? Well, as I said, we're going to work here and I'm going to make it very simple, but for you, especially for this, for your question, watch this video. I'm going to put it in the end. Uh, of this video, I will put a link about data structures. Right now, I will not cover data structures. Watch that one because this one will cover specifically data structures with uh, data labels plugin. Very important. In this case, you need that video. But what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to use it very quickly. I'm going to put in here just a new item and then I will just say here some random value, anything. I'll just make here basically a new object. So that's why data structures has a certain structure in here where you can grab these and you can grab certain items. So you need to watch that one. Anyway, I'm going to say here, uh, well, check. Now let's say I'm just typing something out. Uh, right now I'm working on my new Udemy course. So check out my, uh, check out Udemy course, chart, JS, three, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, uh coming out next week for example all right so i'm just making this here so i am working on my udemy course so this is an indirect promotion here in this case so we have this here make sure you have a comma here so if i save this right now nothing happens here and we are allowed to create just objects in javascript or in chart.js because these are just javascript objects so what i'm just doing here is nothing out of the ordinary but data structures is better because you organize them and directly connect these things with each other anyway so if i open up now my developer tab and right now you can see a lot of the items here so let's start to go back here and just put in here the value if i save this here and refresh all right you can see this all right and then next what i want to do here show this one save and you see here the context and if we go to the context you will see now if we search and dig deeper you can see here the data set and guess what? We have here random object. And what does this say? Check out, well, it should be check out my Udemy course, chart S3, coming out next week. All right. So this is now starting to show correctly. So we can extract that one. So what I will say here is return. Uh, sorry, no column here. And then return, what I'm going to return here, basically the following. I want to return the random value here. So you see data set dot random. So if I do this, and I'll just say here context, which was the starting point, dot data set dot random. If I save this, refresh, and now you can see here, of course, what is happening now is going to show the entire array. I don't want the entire array. So let's look at what we have more. So if I open up here this, you can see still we have the data set or data index here. And this is basically what you want to know. We have the data set or data index, and we have the uh, sorry, the data set index and the data index. So what's the difference? One is related to the data set. So if you have a data set, in that case, and we have the other one here is the data index. So basically what I want here in our case is the 
data index number. So if I on Monday, it should show probably like check. And then the second one would be Udemy and then core and then third one, etc., etc. So how do we get this then? So let's do here another console log. Console log, and in this console log, I'm going to hide this. But here we went from context, then we go into the data set here. Uh, and then, oh, basically, sorry, no, no, I'm even that. I just want to grab only the data index, number one. So we have here context dot data index. So if I do this now, refresh, you can see here, if you hover over, we always grab the array value. This is very important because now we can start to work on what we need. So let's go to grab this one here. We have this random, but random is an array, and this array is now based on this. So if I save this now, refresh, so now we have this here. Of course, I don't want this. I only want this on Hoover. That was the specific request. So how do we do this then? Well, we can just make an if statement here. But what I'm going to do here then, first of all, let's comment this out. We'll just say here, return value. If I save this now, refresh, there we are. So we want this, but then on Hoover, it should show then the matching text here. How do we solve this? To do this, we need to go back into context, and I'm going to show you something very powerful. We save this again, refresh, pay attention here to active. Right now it says false. All right, so if I go here now, you see it's true. The moment I hover away, it's false. True, false, true, false. So this is basically indicating two tips as well. Is it active, yes or no? So are we active? Active would indicate are we on the bar? Because that is what we had to figure out. How would we know on which item we are? And then, well, now we figure that out. And how can we figure out then if we are active, yes or no? This is the way. So we're going to grab this. If I say here context.active, save this, refresh. And now it's by default is false. Now I go here, it's true, false, true, false, there you are. So this is what we need. So once we have this, now we can do an if statement. If, and then all we do here is the following. So if the context active equals strict, and then we say here false. If it's false, we want to show the value by default. Or maybe we can say here true. If it's true, we want to show this one here. Well, enter, and then here, if it's false or else, else the default fall, uh, mode will be this. So else, we always put in the default value. So once we do this, save this, refresh, pay attention here now. You can see here the text. Well, let me hide the tooltip because I know the tooltip is blocking a bit our view. So in here, in the plugins, we can do it in the plugins as well. We say tooltip. And then we say enable, enable. And then we say this equals false. False. There we are, comma, save that. Uh, enable or display may, may somehow or enabled maybe it's enabled sorry it's one or the other there you are if it's enabled and now look at this so now you can see here check out my udemy course charge s3 coming out next week and that's basically here what we have to do so maybe you see this here and maybe you do not like this item here because why imagine this one would be here at the very top it might block this so let's change this one i'm going to show you then we're going to just solve this tiny issue here as well. This here maybe is undesirable. So how do we solve this? Well, guess what? What we can do here is the following here. So what I'm going to look in here is, uh, uh, where is that the Y scale here? Comma, we say grace. And grace basically would mean to put in a space here between. And let's give it here a fixed 5% value. If I save this now, refresh, now you can see it will always have a bit of space here, no matter how high the value goes. Even if the value would be over 100,000 plus, you can see here, there's always a bit of space here. Beautiful. So this is basically the way how you solve this and how you can create this. Of course, let me repeat myself one more time. Watch this video because what I did here is officially not the most professional way. There's a better way, which is called data structures. Data structures is very powerful. This video explains how you do data structures and combine them together into the tooltip 
or so nothing to do in the data labels very important because it works different and the data labels will not understand by default when you use data structure so you must have a tiny adjustment here again watch this video 